This is every single legendary weapon location that you will need from the Guns, Love and Tentacles DLC in Borderlands 3. Let's go. So coming up first, we have the Anarchy, which is a very fitting name for this legendary TDO shotgun. The Anarchy, simply put, is one of the best shotguns you will find in Borderlands 3. And that's mainly down to its legendary effect, in which every time you kill an enemy, or automatically reload the gun, you get a 30% damage bonus and a slight reduction in accuracy. And this can stack up to 10 times, leading to incredible amounts of damage being done once the weapon reaches its max stack limit. Now to obtain this weapon, it's only available as a wild drop and doesn't have a dedicated loot source, but it will drop very frequently throughout your time on Xylorgos. As for the weapon's red flavor text, it reads the stacks, the stacks, which in conjunction with its special effect is a reference to Gage's Anarchy skill in Borderlands 2. It's definitely a weapon you will want to get your hands on. Up next, we have the Clairvoyance, which is another legendary assault rifle coming at you from the Jacobs Corporation. Now to get this, you'll need to farm the crew challenge enemy known as Critchie. Critchie can be found in the Cursehaven region in this location on the map, and this is the main loot source for this weapon. Now the weapon itself is always cryo, and upon getting a critical hit, it will stick to the enemy and explode, causing more bullets to fire out and hit nearby enemies which is actually a really good legendary effect and causes this weapon to pack quite the punch. And as far as assault rifles go, this is definitely up there with some of the best. And finally, the weapon's flavor text reads, a broken smile beneath her whispered wings, which is a quote from the book, The Mothman Prophecies by John Keel. Nothingness is a legendary shotgun made by Maliwan and mainly drops from the crew challenge enemy known as Gamork. Gamork spawns in the Crankerwood region on this location on the map and with a lot of these crew challenge enemies it may take a few tries before you get this to drop. Now both the weapon and the enemy it drops from are a reference to the fantasy novel The Neverending Story. And I have to say, this weapon as a whole kind of shreds. It has a legendary effect similar to that of the Flacker. It basically has a charge shot that when fired causes a lot of several high damage explosions. And these explosions can be targeted if you shoot the enemy at their feet, causing even more damage. The only downside for me is the charge time, which is why I wouldn't really use this too often. But uh, it's definitely one, if you love these kind of shotguns, that you are going to want to add it to your arsenal. The Unseen Threat, a, another legendary Jacob sniper that has a chance to drop from a rare enemy known as a mark. A mark can be found in the Cursehaven region in this location on the map, but bear in mind he will only spawn after you have completed all three stages of the Cold Case questline, which is given to you by Burton Briggs after you complete the main game, and he can be found in the Cursehaven region. The legendary effect of this gun is every time you shoot an enemy and land a critical hit, it will then spawn up to three homing bullets that seek out the nearest enemy. Now, if there are no nearby enemies, all of those bullets will seek out the original target, which makes this weapon a superb choice, especially when going up against bosses with huge crit spots like Grave Ward. The weapon is seriously powerful, and if you have great accuracy in this game, I think you'll enjoy this one. Another new legendary sniper you can get your hands on is known as the Cocky Bastard. And unfortunately, at this moment in time, it's only obtainable from the new DLC 2 chests. This can be any chest from the new white ones, the new weird floating portal ones, and even the red ones as well. Now this weapon's legendary effect is truly something special, because when you get a critical hit, you deal an additional 100% damage as shock damage, which in essence means you're getting double the damage output when you hit those critical hits. And that's very noticeable when you're using the thing, because it will tear through most enemies in the game with ease. It doesn't have the best overall stats, but its legendary effect alone is what makes this thing a powerhouse. Also, to leave this weapon off, it does have the red flavor text which reads, Great Kid, which combined with the name of the weapon is most likely a reference to Star Wars. 
Green kid, don't get cocky. Up next we have a brand new shotgun added with the DLC and this is known as the Shocker. Now the Shocker has a chance to drop from the rare enemy known as Voltborn, who has a chance to spawn in the Nagul Nashoi region in this location on the map. Simply put, this shotgun shoots a shock orb that then splits into three fast moving shock orbs on a horizontal plane and will always come with the shock elements. It's great to use against shielded enemies, but you'll find yourself being able to tear through most of the mobs in this game due to its high damage output anyway. Overall, it's a pretty damn good new shotgun. The Seventh Sense is a legendary Jacob's Pistol that is given to you for completing the quest Cold Case Forgotten Answers, which is the last quest in a three part quest that is given to you by Burton Briggs in the Carsaven region after you complete the main story. Now the weapon itself has very good base damage, will always come with the cryo elements and has a legendary effect in which when you hit an enemy, it will spawn these elemental beams, then when you reload the gun, all of those spawn beams will home in and hit the target. Kind of similar to the Queen slash King's Call effect I guess you could say. And those elemental beams deal a very, very good amount of damage. Not only is the weapon very fun to use, it's very powerful and is definitely a worthy addition to that collection of yours. The Skull Masher, a fan favourite returning from previous Borderlands games and a very welcomed one too. This weapon is a Jacob Sniper that shoots 5 projectiles per shot, which you can imagine with that alone allows you to do massive amounts of damage, especially if you're spamming crit shots on certain boss fights. Because it shoots 5 projectiles, it can also be used like a shotgun to shred mobs incredibly quick and overall is definitely up there in the top 5 best sniper rifles in the game now. At this current moment in time, the only way to get this weapon is from any of the new DLC 2 chests. But just to let you know, that is a bug and it will be available as a normal world drop whenever Gearbox fixes it. Again, overall, this is an amazing new addition to Borderlands 3. Up next we have the Hydra Frost, which is a legendary pistol manufactured by Children of the Vault. To get this, you'll need to farm the rare enemy known as Shiverus the Unscathed, who has a chance to spawn in Nagul Nashai in this location on the map. Now this weapon absolutely shreds, it will always come with the cryo element, and after a kill every second shot deals shock or incendiary damage for 6 seconds. And due to its really fast fire rate and the fact that it shoots out multiple projectiles per shot, really makes this a powerhouse at close ranges. The only real downside to this is its projectile speed, but with that aside, it's still a very good addition to the game. The Farmer Diddle is a new shotgun that can yet again only be obtained as a wall drop. Its legendary effect is that it's always incendiary, has increased damage for a TD or shotgun, and fires 9 projectiles in an O pattern with an expanding and contracting formation. It's also seemingly the spiritual successor to the E-Tech Omen shotgun from Borderlands 2. It also has the red flavour text, number 8, never turn your back on a monster, which is a reference to the instrumental made by the band known as Rush. Overall, in my opinion, it's a decent shotgun, but wouldn't make it into my top 5. The Old Ridian. This is a legendary Hyperion submachine gun that can only be obtained as a wall drop. Now this thing packs a punch on its own and is overall a pretty damn powerful SMG. However, its effectiveness can be ramped up even more with its legendary effect in which every time you reload the gun, it randomly switches to a different element. Also, with it being manufactured by Hyperion, it does have a weapon shield that in this case reduces the elemental damage by 20%. And it also has a unique red tint to it as well. I mean, there's nothing really more to say on this one. It's a very powerful submachine gun. And if you're a fan of Hyperion, this is definitely another one you're going to want to get your hands on. 
Another wall drop weapon. We have the Serial Killer. This is a Children of the Vault Assault Rifle with the legendary effect in which killing an enemy increases the damage and fire rate and reduces the heat shot cost. And this will stack up to three times. Now personally, I'm not a fan of COV assault rifles and my character really isn't tailored towards them either, so my damage wasn't the best with this weapon. However, I will say I do have a friend who has a good anointed variant of this, and he said the thing is a beast, so I'll take his word for it. To finalize this weapon, it has the red flavor text that reads, look at that unsubtle blood red coloring, which is a reference to the 2000 film American Psycho. Coming in for the next spot, we have the Maliwan Insider. This is a legendary shotgun that fires multiple elemental projectiles that shoot in a forward light cluster. These projectiles explode on contact, dealing a lot of elemental splash damage. And I mean a lot. This shotgun is an absolute powerhouse at close range and gives you a lot more slack when it comes to accuracy because of its high splash damage. Overall, it's yet another amazing shotgun to add to your arsenal and again, is another weapon that is in that world drop loot pool. Another new legendary assault rifle manufactured by Jacobs is known as the Mutant. To get this, you'll be farming the rare enemy known as the Fungal Gorger. This enemy has a chance to spawn in the Crankerwood region on this location on the map. Now this is a Jacobs Gatling laser weapon that spawns with no element. It's definitely a very unique style of Jacobs weaponry, but let me tell you, this thing is pretty damn awesome. It's insanely fun to use and is especially good for you flak players out there. Overall, a high damage assault rifle, it does have a bit of recoil kick to it, um, but if you're very good at controlling these things, you'll definitely enjoy this one. Up next, we have the legendary assault rifle manufactured by COV, known as Storos Burn. Now this weapon has a chance to drop from the boss fight known as Wendigo, who you will come across naturally during the story, and spawns in the Crankerwood region in this location on the map. This weapon's unique effect is that when the weapon overheats and breaks, you have a chance to trigger the combust ability. During combust, all shots deal a critical hit, have increased incendiary damage and lowered shot cost. Now again, my character wasn't best suited for this, but combine this with an elemental projector artifact and you'll be dealing a very very good amount of damage with this thing. Overall, with the right build and setup, it's a solid assault rifle. The Soul Render Assault Rifle is manufactured by Dahl and can drop from two enemies known as Tom and Zap. You will come across these guys during the main story, but they do spawn in the Heart's Desire region in this location on the map. The weapon's special effect is that when fired at enemies, it will occasionally spawn homing purple skulls, similar to that of the Gas Call, and these purple skulls explode on contact dealing significantly increased damage than what the weapon normally puts out. Because of its legendary effect, it's overall yet another solid assault rifle they have added to the game. Another addition to the Jacobs pistols, we have the Little Yeti. This has a chance to drop from the crew challenge enemy known as the Yeti, who you will find in the Skittimore Basin region in this location on the map. Its legendary effect is that it has a chance to knock back enemies on each shot you hit, and uh, it also shoots two shots for the price of one. And you can get a masher variant, but it isn't as good as the normal variant you can obtain. Compared to other pistols like the Maggie, it just doesn't hold up. It's a semi-decent alternative option, but in my opinion, this is more of a gimmicky weapon rather than something you would truly want to use for modes like Mayhem 4. Jacobs is coming at you again with another new pistol, this time known as the Love Drill. Now the Love Drill has a chance to drop from the boss known as Eleanor the Heart. Uh, again, she is someone you will come across during the main story. And now she can be found at the very end of the Heart's Desire region in this location on the map. Now this weapon has a few unique aspects to it. Firstly, it has a really cool diamond for its iron sight. 
Secondly, it deals a substantial amount of critical hit damage as seen by the weapon card. And thirdly, it has a 20% chance to deal double damage and shock damage when you hit a target. This thing will shred any enemy with a large crit spot, but when you're not landing those crits continuously, then it doesn't really do that much damage. So it's really only suited for those with a certain playstyle, but other than that, it's a great pistol to use and get your hands on. For the second last weapon, we have the Frozen Devil, which is a legendary Maliman pistol that drops from the crew challenge enemy known as Kakuba Jack. Kakuba Jack can be found in the Nagul and Nashoi region in this location on the map. Now the weapon as a whole is a reference to Mei from Overwatch, being that it shares similar traits to her weapon, and also references her in its red flavor text. It basically has two firing modes. The first is a continuous ice beam that really doesn't do that much damage. And the second is an ice spike that deals all the damage for this weapon. The key with this is to use the high elemental effectiveness of the beam to freeze the target, then switch to the ice spike and get a critical hit to take advantage of the bonus damage you get. It really has a very different playstyle as far as weapons go, and personally, I wouldn't really use this for modes like Mayhem 4. And for the final weapon, we have the SF Force. The SF Force is a brand new submachine gun manufactured by Maliwan. To get this, you'll need to farm the enemy known as DJ Spinmouth, who you will naturally come across during the side quest known as Sinister Sounds. But after you complete that side quest, he will continuously spawn in the Skittermore Basin region in this location on the map. Now, as for the weapon itself, uh, it basically has no charge time and also fires piercing projectiles from two elements at the same time. So if you get the weapon in Incendiary and Cryo, it will shoot both of those elements at the same time. It also has this unique musical note particle effect, which is pretty cool. But truth be told, the weapon just really isn't that good for higher tier modes. If you want to play on Mayhem 3 or Mayhem 2 or something like that, uh, then you can get away with doing a decent amount of damage with this thing. But aside from that, it just really isn't that good. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video today. I couldn't really go into too much detail on each weapon because I didn't really want to make the video like 40 minutes long or something, but hopefully you guys did enjoy the video today. It was a behemoth of a video to make, so if you could leave a like down below, that would be greatly appreciated, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.